When I first heard of the Metabone Speed Booster, I thought it was probably a gimmick. An attachment that not only doubles the speed of your lens, but increases its sharpness at the same time. As we ever cynical English put it, pull the other one, it's got bells on. Take a lens designed for a full frame 36 by 24 mm sensor and put it on a micro four thirds camera with a 17 by 13 mm sensor. So far so good, but that's called an adapter and it costs around 20 pounds, 30 dollars or 25 euros. Then I read up on the Metabones. Essentially it is a 1.4 times teleconverter in reverse. Instead of increasing the effective lens focal length by 1.4 times and losing a stop in aperture, it decreases the focal length by 1.4 and gains a stop. It works like this. Take a 50mm f2 lens and add a 1.4 times teleconverter and you have a 50 times 1.4 and 2 times 1.4 a 70mm f2.8 lens. On a micro four thirds camera equivalent to a 140mm f2.8 with some reduction in sharpness. Handy but not particularly exciting. Take the same lens and add a Metabones 0.7 times converter and you have 50 times 0.7 and 2 times 0.7, a 35mm f1.4 lens. On a micro four thirds body, equivalent to a 70mm f1.4 and added sharpness too. Now that is interesting. For me, I wasn't interested in making f2 into f1.4 though. I've been looking for a decently fast 150 or 200mm. Like most photographers I know, 90% of what I do could be covered by my 12 to 35 and 35 to 100 mm f2.8 zoom lenses. Occasionally I want something wider and the 7 to 14 Panasonic covers that. All top quality lenses. But what if I want something longer? I have only my 100 to 300 mm Panasonic, which is a decent enough lens but not in the same league as the others. And it's slow. There's only one other option, the wonderful 40 to 150mm Olympus f2.8 zoom. But since I already have my light and compact 35 to 100 Panasonic f2.8, that's a lot of money to lay out for an extra 50% reach. Micro Four Thirds really is lacking in choice at the long end. So it occurred to me, buy an old 300mm manual focus cheaply and stick a Metabones on it. A bit of research showed that the Nikon 300mm f4.5 ED from the mid-80s, with its internal focusing, was a pick of the bunch. It was the sharpest and most compact 300mm Nikon ever made, before autofocus took over, and while it cost an arm and a leg back then, I bought mine for £140 a few months ago. That and the Metabones give me my 200mm with an aperture of f3.2, just a half a stop slower than f2.8. The Metabones has an actual multiplier of 0.71 times, so to be accurate I have a very fast 213mm lens, within a gnat's whisker of my desired 200mm, and if I put a standard adapter on the Nikkor I have a bonus 300mm f4.5. The equally compact Nikkor 200mm f4 gives me a neat 142mm f2.8. How is the Metabones in use? You just fit it and use it of course. It doesn't add much weight or size, certainly a lot less than a doubling in speed would imply. A lot depends on the lens you attach it to. Put it on a Nikon 14 to 24 mm f2.8 zoom and you have a 10 to 17 mm f2 zoom. That makes the Olympus 9 to 18 4 to 5 6 look pretty pedestrian, though the Olympus does have the advantage that you can afford both that and the house to put it in. While it is true that you are going to be stuck with manual focusing, you are not stuck with manual exposure since aperture priority works fine. Unlike a DSLR, when you stop down manually, the viewfinder image doesn't dim but turns up the brightness to compensate. I use this combination on my Panasonic GX7 because that has in-body stabilisation, but Olympus cameras with their superb 5-way stabilisation have to drop on anything Panasonic here. Manual focusing takes practice, but don't imagine that focusing a quality old lens is like focusing a modern lens designed for auto use.
This nickel has an almost sensual feel to its focusing. It's perfectly weighted and doesn't so much move as glide. It snaps in and out of focus even without focusing aids. But with focus magnifying and or peaking turned on, it is hairpin accurate and quick. And what a luxury it is not having to manipulate the focus area or worry about half pressing the shutter release to fix focus. Just concentrate on your subject, turn the ring to keep it in focus and fire at will. It's much easier than you might think. One highly subjective observation. The drawing, the colour quality of these old lenses is pure eye candy. The pictures of the deer here are made by this lens. Modern digital lenses have an analytical, almost clinical quality to them. They produce ultra-sharp and clean images. These older lenses, the quality ones from Leica, Zeiss, Nikon and Canon, were different in character. They seem to have weight, density, detail. They almost paint an image. Pretentious, moi. I did say this was subjective. But back to the Metabones. It isn't cheap. I paid £320, 500-ish dollars, around 430 euros. It comes in a smart protective box with caps and a couple of Allen keys, one for adjusting infinity focus, which you're unlikely to need, and the other for removing the tripod mount. It is made in brass and chrome and feels heavy and solid, and it's obviously very well machined and made. When fitted, there is absolutely no play, and you wouldn't know from feel that you were using an adapter at all. There's a removable tripod mount under the adapter, which is ideal for mounting on a monopod or tripod quick release plate. Then there is a numbered band around the metabones for lenses that have no aperture ring of their own, and that's about it. So how does it perform? Inevitably, overall performance will depend on the lens to which it is attached. This first comparison is between the Panasonic 100-300 to zoom and the Nikkor 300. The zoom wide open at f5.6 and Nikkor ditto at f4.5. You can see that the Nikkor is both sharper and has more contrast. Here is the zoom at 210mm wide open at f5 and the Nikkor with the Metabones at f3.2 giving a similar focal length but one and a half stops faster. The sharpness difference is obvious as is the contrast. I also have an old Nikkor 200mm f4. At f4 this lens is not particularly good and I'd want to stop it down to f5.6. With the Metabones the lens becomes a 142mm f2.8 in full frame parlance near enough the classic 300mm f2.8 and it sharpens up to the extent that I'd mostly use it wide open for the higher shutter speeds. With longer lenses the edge to edge sharpness of the Metabones is good but with shorter lenses for critical use you want to stop the lens down a couple of stops to bring in the edges. This is after all an adapter. Remember though that that was just as true of the ultra high speed lenses of any era. Used wide open, they were designed to give central sharpness at the expense of the edge. Such lenses are mainly used for photographing people in dark interiors, so edge sharpness really doesn't matter. For such everyday use, forget about the adapter and just shoot as if you were using a native lens. To sum up, I'd say the Metabone really is something for nothing apart from the £320 of course. It adds an extra dimension to four thirds cameras giving all those old lenses a new and exciting lease of life. I wish I'd never sold my 180mm f2.8 Nikkor all those years ago. Or what about a 300 28 A 400mm f2 equivalent? To my knowledge such a lens has never been made in full frame. Or my 35mm f1.4 Canon? 25mm f1 anyone? It's just optical pornography, really. Here's the 300 Nikkor and Metabones wide open. Just look at that narrow band of focus. It gives you the shallower depth of field of the faster lens it produces. The Metabones will appeal to a limited section of Micro Four Thirds users who fancy ultra high speed glass or, like me, want glass that the lens makers just don't supply. The Nikkor 2 or 300 with Metabones is part of my kit now. As a final observation, I can only say this. A mate lent me his Metabones for a month. I gave it back to him after a week. Why? Because I'd bought my own. Thanks for watching.